Hey, what's up guys? It's Kyle with Temple of the West. I just wanted to go through real quick for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, metal miniatures, kind of what to expect and how to, like the tools you need and what to do to assemble. So real quick, I've got um, kind of this latest pack all set out here. This is, this is exactly how you'll receive it. I wanted to go over some things on metal miniatures that I don't want you to think are wrong or anything when you receive them. So uh, first off, a couple things you might notice is that some of the weapons will have like this little tag hanging off here. I don't want you thinking that that's like a miscast or anything like that. All that is is just a vent. When I pour 700 degree metal into a mold, the air has to escape somewhere so that the metal can fill every little void of these little spikes and things like that. So what happens is you have to cut little vents and you see this one right here. They come off super easy. You can just flick them with your finger back and forth a couple times and, and they'll come right off. So look for those on your models first and kind of take those off. Usually they're going to be around kind of the pointy things because those are the things that you want to make sure fill out when you're making a mold. So you'll clean those off. And just make sure it looks good. So after that, what you're going to want to do is make sure your models are clean. So when you're when you're making molds and, and creating these miniatures, you're using talc powder. And talc powder, it's really, really fine. It's also asbestos-free if you're watching the Johnson & Johnson trial. Um, so talc powder can keep your part from wanting to glue. It just makes it seem like the glue never wants to set because talc powder does not, uh, it does not want things to attach. That's why we put it in the mold because it allows the miniature to pop out really easy and allows the metal to flow really well into the mold. So as you can see, I'm just kind of fiddling around, pulling off all the little vents here. That's what you'll do with these parts. Um, in this kit, you got four black paladins, which for hero scapers, it's Evo and armor. Um, I gave you one guy here that's separate on purpose so that you could kind of pose him however you want. And the one I put together, I kind of put his, uh, his right foot forward like that. It gave him a pretty cool looking pose, but this just kind of allows you to have a little fun with the kit and kind of make it however you want. Now, people have been asking about, uh, assembly, assembly. You can pen them together if you want. I don't know. You know how hard you guys are on your miniatures. I'm I'm pretty easy on mine, but I also have a ton of metal miniatures, so I kind of know how to be with them. Um, they're obviously not as gumby, and you can't throw them across the room like you could a hero skate miniature. But um, these are the two glues that I recommend. I always use one of these. Now I'll say I used to be this guy, and then I went to this guy over here. But I've been having problems with consistency in the formula of the Gorilla Glue. Um, it seems like it's a lot of the times it's it's more gel than it is the actual glue, and I can't ever get the part to set sometimes. And then sometimes it's a great batch, but this stuff right here works every time. Now it grabs pretty quick, and you need to get your part kind of right where you want it. But I haven't had problems with the formula on this one. Other tools you want if you're messing with metal miniatures and haven't done it before, you're gonna want a pair of just kind of hobby snips. Because you might need to, you know, look at the bottom of the miniature and, and the way we clip them off the sprue. You might need to clip it a little bit there to get it nice and flat. And when I say sprue, they literally are on this when it comes out of the mold. These guys are all attached like this. And we clip them off. And we try to get it as flat as possible. But if it's not perfect, you know, it's normal for you to have to shave a little bit. The next thing to have is a nice... Uh, not super sharp, but get one of your like worn out X-Acto knives um, because those are better for metal because you can just kind of push and shave into your finger and you're not going to cut your finger. Um, and that's just good for just anywhere where you feel like a part's not sitting perfectly flat and things like that. Uh, you can just give a little quick shave with this. Or if you have a vent like this vent on his toe. Now this one's probably just going to pull right off. Yeah, but if you have other ones that are you feel like are trickier, like on this horn right here, you just give it kind of a quick little 
swipe like that. And that's why I say not to use a super sharp one because you're not trying to dig into the metal. You're just trying to usually ease it or release something like this little vent right here. So those just come off super easy and then they clean up nice and, and these guys are ready to go. So I always just kind of, the last thing you want to do is start priming your model and then you realize, oh no, I left a vent on there. Cause then you got to pull it back off and you messed up part of your model you primed. But so I always give them kind of a quick spin and I usually run my fingers over them like this to see if there's anything loose. Cause that'll be a vent obviously, but that's it. So let's real quick look at assembly. Um, cause I know some of you guys are a little hesitant about that. Um, like I said, make sure your parts are clean and get the talc powder off. You can wash them or you can just give them a good wipe down with a wet paper towel. These guys are pretty jagged so I wouldn't do the paper towel method on these um, and then you just take your glue I like to look at the part first so this right here oh see I got a little vent right there I need to take off don't want to do that afterwards let me get that off before and see that's why I do a dull one I can cut right into my finger there and it's not hurting me at all this guy's been through a lot of miniatures with me. All right, so we're going to do a test fit before we stick a bunch of glue on there. Now you can see I left his hand goes right in there. It's perfect. In fact, I can actually, this guy, he's rare because <laughs> I, that sword pretty much fits on there. Look, I can turn him all the way over. That's a nice fit. So that'll this one will glue on pretty easy. Um, I'm just going to put a little dab and in the course of building this whole set, probably going to glue your fingers together at least once. That's okay. I still do it. We're just going to hold it for about five or 10 seconds. Sometimes you have to do it longer. If it's a heavier part, that's kind of precariously hanging off into a void. And, and sometimes you have to almost kind of balance it somewhere and let it set. Um, another trick is that I'll use sticky tack to support uh, a piece. What I mean by that is I should have brought some down here, but so he's just going to sit there and dry. Um, let's say like uh, this uh, shield right here. Okay, it's going to glue right in that little pocket. Okay, and again, you got a little bit of, you can kind of play around with how you want it to pose. You want to look at all the angles and make sure it doesn't look weird when you get it in the pose you like. Yeah, that's cool. Let's do that. Kind of like more of a guard type pose. Um, so, sometimes... Again, with metal miniatures, you'll have a part that's kind of heavy. You know, this this shield is not a small shield. It's as big as part of my finger here. So um, when you're wanting to get that to set, if you don't want to sit and hold it for a while, you could put some sticky tack in this void right here. And when you put your glue, put your glue and kind of press it into the sticky tack right to where you want it. And then you can kind of set it over to the side and let it dry. It's just a, a little cheat right there, but we'll put some glue on that. You guys can kind of see, I'm not going crazy with the glue here. I'm just doing little dabs because the metal wants to stick with this glue. The more glue you put, the longer it takes to set. And I know some of you guys use glue as almost a filler if you got stuff that has kind of a void in it or, or a decent seam line. And that's that's sort of a painter's trick too. And that's that would be actually better for the, the gel glue to, to kind of build it up a little bit, push the part in there, and it fills the seam out. And then when you go to prime it, you can't even hardly tell there's a line in there. All right, so I've been holding it for, I don't know, five or ten seconds. Oh, I just pushed it with my thumb. I've been doing this for 
almost 20 years and you can see I still goof it every once in a while. And this is probably one of the heavier parts you're going to have on a joint like this. And once it sets, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And it's not obviously fully dry yet, but I'm going to let this obviously set. Some of you guys might want to pen these heavier parts. Penning is where you take a very, very small hand driven, um, it's called a pen vise. And it's little, little teeny tiny drill bits. And then what you'll do is you'll take a little piece of paper clip or something like that and you'll cut it and you'll insert one piece into the part and one, and so you'll drill a hole in the part and you'll drill a hole in the mini and uh, you'll put the paper clip in one part, glue it in there, and then you'll glue it into the mini. And what that does is it gives you um, almost like a, a mortise and tenon type joint there. It's just, it's, it's a very solid joint is what it is. So let's look at this guy here. And again, I'm not trying to make this the longest video in the world. Whoop, hit my camera. But I wanted to be thorough for the guys that have never done this before. So I'm just going to kind of fill the little base up there. And let's, let's, uh, I already did one kind of straight on like that. So I'm going to just, it's amazing if you just change the angle a little bit. It'll make it look like an entirely different sculpt. So this is one that would be easy to pin if you wanted to. Um, you could just go straight up the, the middle of the torso there. But I'll just let him sit. These guys are nice because a lot of them just stand up already. I say that and the second one I pick up doesn't do it. Um, again, some of that might be that. He just needs to be uh, snipped a little bit cleaner on the bottom. Um, <clears throat> I guess the next thing we could look at is how do you put these guys on a base? Well, kind of the similar concepts. Uh, you can drill and pen it. Which I know for HeroScape guys, you're going to either just go straight to the base... Or you're going to do kind of a built-up base with cork and decorate it and things like that. Um, HeroScape guys, you're probably going to be putting a sticker on the base. And then you're going to want to either just glue it to the sticker or, um, you know, put a post in it. So, and by putting a post, I mean just doing a little drilling and putting a little paper clip in there. I'll be honest, I've done a lot of HeroScape customs. I just glue it to the sticker. What I usually do is I'll cut a little piece of the sticker out so that I'm actually gluing it to the base and not the sticker. But obviously there's some sticker going too. And you can see I'm handling this guy already. And he was just in half. So he's not fully dry yet, but you can handle him already. But I'm just going to put some glue right there. I'm going to set them right there on the base. And, uh, yeah. So that's what you'll do. And the cool thing about these kits versus, like, the 3D printed stuff that you're getting on eBay, these are fully posable. So you can do some pretty cool poses here. And then, of course, the, the, the detail on these is literally like it was from the factory. It's beautiful. These things almost paint themselves. So I'm going to do another video to show um, how I could do a quick paint job on these. And I mean quick. And it'll exceed what came from the factory. And it'll look really nice. So uh, that's it kind of for assembly and, and what you do with metal miniatures. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Um, my production value is that of a second grader. So... I apologize if you're watching this going, wow, this is horrible. But um, again, these this kit here will be available on Temple of the West uh, very shortly. Um, by the time you're watching this, it might already be up. But uh, www.templewest.co, not .com, .co. Thanks, guys.